Alright, uh, this is intended to be a beginner's guide to oscilloscopes. And I was trying to remember back when I got my first oscilloscope, how I learned how to use it. And I don't think there was any book. I don't think there was anyone who taught me. I think I just had to figure it out. And look at it. I mean, it's super complicated. There's all kinds of buttons and knobs and things that turn and switches and it's very, very intimidating. So uh, I'm going to try to demystify some of the things here. Um, but what is an oscilloscope? Okay, so we need to get that concept out of the way. So I'm going to be talking about the oscilloscope as an Etch-a-Sketch. If, if people don't know what that is, it's a kid's toy and it has two wheels. One wheel moves uh, a cursor, basically, back and forth in the in the X direction, and one moves it back and forth in the Y direction, okay? And if you want to draw a picture, you have to turn the two knobs to uh, get the stylus to, to draw a picture. Well, an oscilloscope is like an Etch-a-Sketch. It, it has uh, one knob in the uh, horizontal direction and one knob in the vertical direction. So, um, let, me, let me slow this way down. And here you can see this is the Etch-a-Sketch going in the uh, X direction, right? So. It's like the knob on the kid's toy is always rotating. It's always, it's always going, and it's going at a constant rate. And you get to set the constant rate. You get to say how fast it goes, okay? So we can make it go very, very slow, um, and we can make it go very, very fast. So it goes, it goes so fast that we can't see it, okay? Our eye can't pick it up. But it is going back and forth just like this. It's going back and forth, okay? Now, there's also a Y knob, so it can wiggle up and down in the Y direction as well. Okay, so this is just like an, just like an Etch-a-Sketch, all right? So, what does it do? Well, it gives us a graph of time versus amplitude. So, the voltage coming into the oscilloscope will change where that dot is in the vertical direction. But the horizontal one will keep going, and that's time. So one, two, three, four, that's just time. So it's time versus amplitude, or time versus voltage, okay? So it's a graph of, of voltage and time. All right, so um, how do we set up? How do we start getting some picture that we can start playing with? Well, fortunately, um, oscilloscopes usually have a calibrator output, so you need to look around yours. And mine is over here, so I, I've got my scope probe. I'm going to connect my scope probe to channel 1. So channel 1 is over here. So I put it on channel 1, and now I'm going to hit the scope probe up to the calibrator, which is right over this way. All right, oops. There we go. All right, so I'm getting two dots now. Why am I getting two dots? Well, um, if I speed it up, it'll be apparent. So I'm going to speed it up. This big knob here is how fast it's going in the X direction. And if I keep going and keep going, there we go. So this calibrator outputs a high voltage and then a low voltage, and then a high voltage and a low voltage. It's outputting a square wave, right? Now, when you first turn the oscilloscope on, you might not see anything, right? It might be adjusted too fast, and then you don't see anything at all. Or uh, it might be adjusted just right, but the intensity is down. So this is how bright the display is, okay? And some of the oscilloscopes that have a push button that says beam find, and some of them will show you a beam no matter what. This scope does not. You push the beam find, it still doesn't find anything. You need to turn up the intensity. And then if you hit beam find, it squishes it down. So sometimes things are also out, off the top or they're off the bottom. And that, so that one's off the top. If I hit beam find, it says, oh, yeah, there was something up there. There was something up there. You need to bring it down. Um, so that's what this beam find thing does. But those are kind of more advanced topics. We'll, we'll just kind of give you an idea of how the oscilloscope is working. So our voltages are coming into channel one, right? And we have to tell the oscilloscope that we want to watch channel one because it has multiple channels. And so there are buttons here. This one says channel one. This one says channel two. And it's, I can watch channel one and channel two at the same time. And if I turn off channel one, but I have channel two on, there's nothing coming into the channel two. So I just get a straight line. If I turn on channel three, uh, there's nothing coming in. I just get a straight line, right? So we'll turn on channel one. We'll just be looking at channel one right now. So we have channel one on. Now, how do we make it bigger or smaller? Well, that's what this knob does. 
I can make it small and I can make it big, okay? And I can uh, get it to a place where I like it, okay? Let's say I like it here. And then I can read here and it says 50 millivolts. What does that mean, 50 millivolts? Well, it means that for every um, mark on the oscilloscope, these are grids. So 50 millivolts, 100 millivolts. So what we're seeing here is an excursion in voltage of 100 millivolts. It goes from here to here. I take a look at my calibrator. My calibrator says it's, oh, it's one volt. But I have a times 10 probe. So the times 10 probe divides it by 10. We get 100 millivolts, and that's what we're measuring. 50, 50, 100. So we're measuring 100 millivolts. And we can make it a little more accurate. We come to here. And now it's kind of hard to read because we're not on a line. We would like to be on a line. Well, we can use the position to move it up and down. And we can move it so that this bottom one is right on a line. And now it's easier for us to count. And this one is 20 millivolts. So it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So now we're getting a little more accurate because we made, we made it bigger, okay? So we can go anywhere from uh, 5 volts per division to uh, 5 millivolts per division. So you need to figure out what's best for, for what you're doing, okay? And then this, like I said, this makes it go up and down. So where should you put it? Well, sometimes you just want to put it on a line so you can measure things relatively. Sometimes you want to measure things absolutely. So you want to know some absolute value. Well, this little switch here, you can say ground. And that just says disconnect the BNC and connect it to ground. So that's what ground looks like. So I can move the ground around. I can put ground there right on the center line. I can say, okay, I know that's ground. And now when I hit the button, I say, oh, ground plus 50 plus 100 millivolts. Right? And I can look at DC signals or AC signals. I'm not really looking at DC signals or AC signals. That's not what it's, what it, what it's doing. What it's doing is it says, Show me the, all the DC voltages, and we know this is ground, and we know this goes in the positive direction. This would be in the negative direction. Um, if we put it on AC, what that does is it introduces a capacitor. So remember the center was ground? Well, if we have a capacitor in the circuit, then everything will average to zero. And so sometimes waveforms are all goofy, and it's hard to figure out how to measure them. So you, instead of doing it DC-wise, you can measure it AC-wise, and that always just does an averaging and puts it exactly where, where you'd like it to be. So that's what this thing does. DC, ground, and AC. Okay, let's leave it on DC. Now, um, let's see. I think the next thing to do, we'll just, we'll just keep going down. Um, triggering. What does it mean to trigger? Well, remember our Etch-a-Sketch is moving all the way over, but then we have to start over. So we go, and then we start over. We go, we start over. Well, where do we start over? When do we start over? Um, well, the machine will look at edges. It'll look at a rising edge or look at a falling edge, and it'll say, ah, I see a rising edge, so that's where I'm going to start. So. We can move things up and down, remember, with this knob. We can move things back and forth over here with this knob. Okay, this is the horizontal position. Vertical position, horizontal position. So we can move this back and forth. Well, what's the very, very first thing we see? Well, that's where the trigger happened. So that waveform is repeating, and it sees a positive edge, and so it's going to start. All right? Over here, if we hit it to negative edge, that's what this button does. It's going to start on the negative going edge. Positive going edge, negative going edge. Okay. So that's what triggering is. Let's look at what this button does. So it says trigger one, trigger two. Or it says channel one, channel two, channel three. What it's doing is it's saying use the information on channel one to go into the trigger circuit. Okay, so find the, find the edges on channel one. If we have it here, it says find the edges on channel two. And here it says find the channels uh, edges on channel three. So if our input was actually channel two, let's move it down, okay? And instead of hitting channel one, we'll hit channel two. And uh, now we don't see anything. Uh-oh, we don't see anything. What happened? What happened? Do we do beam find? Oh, yeah, look. Beam find found something. 
So maybe our position is wrong. Oh, wait, yeah, there it is. Oh, I see it. Wow, it's really ugly though. Super, super ugly. What happened? Oh, I've got my, uh, my volts way too sensitive. Well, that now went away again. I hit my beam find and now it's in the down direction. I can move it, move it up. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, and I can get it so it's about the right size that I want. Okay, but it's not triggering. It's not triggering. I need to tell it trigger on channel two. And there we go. Now I can see it. All right. So trigger on channel one, channel two, channel three. Okay. Um, so if I have more than one thing, I can have channel two. I can also turn on channel one. Now I've got two things, right? So here, here is my channel one. Channel one's just nothing because I've got nothing connected to the BNC. And channel two is just flipping around. Why? Oh, that's because my triggering is set to channel one and I have nothing coming into channel one. I need to set it to channel two. Now I'm triggering on channel two, right? All right. So hopefully we understand this now. This one also has a separate setting, but that's kind of more advanced. So we'll, we'll wait for that. Let's go back up to channel one. We have channel one, turn off channel two. Let's set our, let's set our ground reference. We're going to set our ground. We're going to go to DC. There we go. We've got a hundred millivolts. Everything's looking great. All right. So what else do we have here? Uh, we have some other interesting things. Those are more advanced. So we're going to wait for those. Um, all right. So, um, we talked about intensity. Okay. Make it, you don't want to have in a CRT, you don't want to have it be really, really bright. It'll, it'll ruin the phosphor in the CRT. You need to keep it the brightness that you want. Okay. Not too bright, not too dim. Just don't go, just don't go overboard with it. Right. The other thing might be focus. So you can get a blurry image and then this knob here lets you get a nice sharp image. Right. So that's what, sh that's what uh, focus does. Um, Illumination is the lines. Is there's a little light bulb in there and I can turn that light bulb on and make those lines more visible if I want to. That's usually used in scope cameras. So back in the day, these weren't digital oscilloscopes. How do you record the information? Well, you would actually take a picture of it. Well, you could do that with your cell phone. If you get one of these, maybe from your grandfather, then you could use your cell phone to take a picture and then that's your storage. You use your cell phone. Okay. I've done that before. Um, your oscilloscope might be maladjusted. Okay. Let me show you an adjustment here right on the front. This one says trace rotation. Okay. And you can put a screwdriver in there. And if your line is crooked, it needs to be rotated. And that's what trace rotation does. So this is kind of a little adjustment here. We'll make it nice and, uh, we'll make it nice, nice and straight across. That's what that one does. Okay. Um, let's take a look more. Okay. Let's turn this on. We'll go back to DC. We'll go over here to the time base. Let's talk about the time base. Okay. Time base. Um, it's marked. We're going to rotate the big dial. There's two knobs, but we're going to rotate the outside one right now. And it's marked of units. So right in this sector here, it's in milliseconds down here. It's in seconds. So what does that mean? Well, it means let's go back. Let's go down to seconds. Let's go down to, this is a half a second setting. What does half a second mean? It's, it's a half a second per division. So it takes a half a second to go one division. So two divisions would take an entire second. Okay. One sheep, two sheep, three sheep, four sheep, right? So half a second. And then this would be 10 milliseconds. So one division would be 10 milliseconds. Well, let's get a good looking picture. Okay. Let's go here. And if we want to measure things, remember how I used this to kind of get us onto a line so that it's easier to measure things. You can use this to kind of get you on a line uh, in the X direction. So we'll kind of get this here. So, so really it's going up and down. That's one period, right? That's, that's entire period. This is a half period, half period. That's a full period. So it's about two divisions per period. Well, we're at 0.5 milliseconds. So it takes 0.5 to go there takes 0.5 to go there. So it's taking, um, one millisecond to have an, to have a full period. Then you have to do the math. If you want to know the frequency, you know, the period and if you want to know the frequency, it's one over the period. So one over one millisecond is a one kilohertz. So we know this is a one kilohertz signal. So you need to do some math in your head too, or get out a calculator. Okay. So we talked about the speed. Okay. 
making it go slow, making it go fast. Um, there's also a bunch of buttons here. Um, auto is the oscilloscope tries to do everything it can to make a good picture. That's what auto does. Normal says only show me a picture if it's a good one. <laughs> And um, if it doesn't trigger well, you won't see a picture and this light won't come on. This light says triggering is happening. Triggering is good. So both of these working pretty good. You can also do single sweep. Can you see that? Push it real fast, you can see it. One sweep at a time. Sometimes that's valuable if it's very, very slow. One sweep. And it'll do its one sweep. And then when it's done, it won't re-trigger, okay? You have to push the button again to make it go. Okay, so that's what that's what that button does. Okay, um, let's see. We're getting more and more advanced here as we go. Okay, like I said, you can trigger on the positive or the negative uh, rising edge or the falling edge. Sometimes the signal will be noisy. Okay, and if the signal is noisy, let's see if we can move here to the 20 millihertz and get a noisy signal. It's a little bit noisy now. See it, how it jittered just a little bit? It might be picking up some high frequency noise and stuff. You can say, I'm gonna get rid of that high frequency. I'm gonna put it in high frequency reject, okay? And a high frequency reject may help us. Um, yeah, it's a little bit flickery right now. And if I turn up, put it on a high frequency reject, yeah, it helps a little bit, not much. If I put it into low frequency reject now, one kilohertz is too fast for it, so it's not triggering well. But sometimes you want to trigger on slow events, and low frequency reject is good, or high frequency reject is good. All right. Um, just like over here, remember I said you could do, you could look at DC things, or you could look at uh, DC things through a capacitor, which is AC coupling. The trigger is the same way. You can have DC or AC coupling. At the, at the top, it's AC coupling. At the bottom, it's DC coupling, all right? Uh, this is the level that tells you where on the edge you'll trigger, okay? So sometimes it's good to play with this. So here it's not triggering very good, it's flickering. And you can move this around. This is a very easy signal to trigger on because it's a square wave, so this isn't doing much. Let's go back to uh, one bolt for division. There we go, get a nice pretty picture. All right, let's look at some more advanced features here now that we've kind of got the, the major things out of the way. What are these red knobs for? They're bright red, what do they do? Um, well, they do two things. So over here, remember, this one makes it bigger or smaller in the vertical direction. This allows you to make intermediate you can make it any size you want to in, 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 in any step you want to, right? And so sometimes that's just good to take, make a good picture and stuff. Um, but most of the time you want to um, put it in the calibrated condition. This one tells me I'm uncalibrated. It turns on a red LED here, it says, oh, you're doing something bad. And so not bad, but just be careful because it's uncalibrated. We turn it all the way and it goes click and then that turns off. And that means that our one volt, remember how we measured exactly 100 millivolts? That's when it's in its calibrated position. If it was in some other position that we couldn't read uh, the absolute number, it would be a relative number. So you want to make sure that's in that position. Now, what if things are really, really tiny, okay, and you want to make them bigger? Well, you pull on it. And pulling on it is a times, times five. It says pull for times five, okay? So for here, that's five times bigger. So we can make it smaller by rotating it, or we can make it bigger by pulling it, okay? So that's what that one does. Not all scopes are the same. What does this one do? Same thing. If we rotate it, we can make it relative. It's no longer calibrated, and a red light came on saying you're no longer calibrated, but we can make it any size we want to, okay? And if we pull it, it gets bigger. So let's go back out. Small, big, small, big. All right.
Okay, that's a brief introduction to oscilloscopes. Um, I'll end the video here. I'll probably do some other videos of the more advanced features of oscilloscopes, and then maybe move on to digital oscilloscopes, although that's a really, really big subject. Digital oscilloscopes have a bazillion things in them, and it would take forever to uh, film all of, the, all of the features that a digital oscilloscope has these days.